Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back the captivity of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin, Selah. Thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Thou hast turned thyself from the fierceness of thine anger. Turn us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thine anger toward us to cease. Wilt thou be angry with us forever? Wilt thou draw out thine anger to all generations? Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Sue us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. Note that the Advent is misplaced chronologically in the first seven verses. Verses 1 to 3 refer to the restoration of Israel after the 17th week is over, while verses 4 to 7 refer to the remnant in the tribulation waiting for the Advent. In these verses, all is apparent. Verse 1 is the end of the tribulation. Verse 2 is the end of the tribulation. Verse 3 is the end of the tribulation. Verses 4 to 7 are tribulation prayers that are answered at the end of the tribulation. Not from pro problem anywhere in the passage. Wilt thou not revive us again? I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that, that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps. His saints in verse 8 are the saints of Daniel chapter 7 verse 18 and verses 21 and 22. They are to his people of Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 43, and they warned not to turn back exactly as they were instructed in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 38 and 39, when God spoke from heaven in the tribulation, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 to 27, and Haggai chapter 2, verse 6. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. They never can until then. They never can un unless the king of righteousness precedes the king of peace. See Hebrews chapter 7 verse 2. For there is no peace on earth until there is righteousness. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. And there is no righteousness until there is glory to God in the highest. Luke chapter 2 verse 14. Isaiah gives it as James gives it. No peace without righteousness. Isaiah chapter 32 verse 17. Truth certainly didn't spring out of the earth anywhere between the crucifixion and now. Truth fell in the streets, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 14. The context of righteousness and peace kissing each other and mercy and truth meeting together is our land shall yield her increase, verse 12, and glory dwelling in our land, verse 9. The problem in this age is simple. Man has rejected God's righteousness and so cannot have any peace. Further, if, if the truth is known, the whole truth, then mercy is out of the question. For the truth of the matter is Romans chapter 1, 2 and 3. It's mercy in spite of the truth, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 to 5, that saves the sinner. Righteousness shall go before him. Tells that the king of righteousness, Melchizedek, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 2 had to sow up before the king of peace came, king of Salem. He sowed it up, but when he sowed it up, he put righteousness and peace so far apart that kissing distance was out of the question. How do you kiss when you are 2,000 years apart? You don't. Inspirationally, we can say there are all kinds of things here. God's people need reviving from time to time. Times of revival are, revival are times of rejoicing. We are to listen to God, not to man. Your peace, verse 8, will depend upon whether you keep in your heart the ways of them, Psalm chapter 84, verse 5, or turn back to folly, Psalm chapter 85, verse 8. 
God will set the man in the way of his steps, if he desires to go in that direction. See Psalm chapter 27, verse 11, chapter 1, verse 1, and uh, chapter 16, verse 11, and chapter 25, verse 4. God, paths and directions are the paths and directions of righteousness. Other ways than path of God are destruction and hell. So extreme better is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen.